Something quite curious in this crisis is that the foreign exchange markets have not had any protagonism. If you accept a small crisis with the Turkish Lira, South African Rand, or Iceland Krona, previously to the Great Crisis, one could say that this is the first financial and economic crisis of great dimensions without a simultaneous meltdown in foreign exchange markets. Some doubts may arise now that Chinese authorities are doing a state, a statements in favor of promoting the use of special drawing rights. Gazing game of the sustainability of dollar's role and exchange rate level in past months, mainly, and working just now in the opposite direction, the most recent would be a speculation against the euro. In fact, I think we are ending a dollar cycle. Look at this uh, chart, and you can see that starting from year 68-69, there have been three different periods as regards the dollar. The dollar was very weak in the 70s, very strong between in the, in the 80s and 90s, and very weak, weak in the decade ending now, with some periods of uh, strength or weakness, of course. I think the dollar has started a secular decline, a secular decline, in fact, is began when, when Nixon declared the dollar non-convertible in gold, into gold. Currencies lose weight in the international arena when new competing economies surge. It happened to the sterling pound, it happened to the, to the dollar with the appearance of German and, and Japanese economies. And something similar is going to happen with the yuan renminbi in the future. So, you can see here that the dollar is declining from the beginning of the 17th against, if, you, if we measure this by a trade-weighted exchange index. Shaded areas are U.S. recessions in every chart. But we can tell something, we can say something more about the dollar. In fact, when the dollar enters, when the U.S. economy enters in a recession, the dollar performs in a very typical pattern. Initially, it is strong, then it becomes weak, and then strong again. In May 2009, in a presentation I did in Madrid for clients, I was forecasting the dollar would be 1.50, some, some months later, and then go back and strengthen. It uh, happened quicker than I thought, in fact. And my forecast is that the dollar will appreciate from now until 2015 and probably will reach 0.80 to the euro. So we are in 2010. This year, the FMI will have to change the composition of the, of the special drawing rights basket. Is it the moment for the yuan renminbi to be included in the basket? Will, will this happen if the Chinese authorities refuse to make the renminbi convertible? That's open to discussion. In fact, I think the yuan renminbi will become convertible, if not this year, very soon. And it will be very strong at the very, very beginning and weaken later on for two reasons. First, China has not accomplished its political transition. And then political transitions does, doesn't happen, don't happen without uh, social unrest. And then increasing private consumption will be necessary in China to placate that social unrest. But suddenly, after preparing this presentation, something happened. New questions are on the table. 
most of them are about uh, euro viability. Is there what is happening now? Is it what is happening now in a speculative attack against the euro? I think it is not. I think it is in a speculative attack against some instruments denominated in euros, which are much more easy to, much easier to attack because they are uh, limited to national markets. Some people are confusing euro depreciation with euro destruction. In fact, I think that most of what has been happening in the last weeks, it sounds strong, is just a tempest in a teapot. Well, many people have been saying that the euro was very weak. You can see in this chart that, in fact, it is the dollar which has been very strong when compared with the euro, with a US index, or the inverse of the gold bullion. In fact, the dollar has appreciated against the euro 9%, but the dollar index has appreciated 8%, and the dollar against gold price has appreciated 13%. So I think it is a case of dollar strength. Dollar strength typical of the end of the US recessions. And what about the behavior of uh, stock exchanges in Europe and the US these days? You can see there from the beginning of December, the Dow Jones Industrial and the DJ Eurostoxx 50. And what happened in 1992? It's a sense of déjà vu. Europe dropping 15, 20 percent, even 30 percent in some national cases. The U.S. The US stock indexes more or less 8 percent, and then let's hope recovering quickly, like in 92. So, what about uh, interest rates and commodity prices? I think we still have the same problem, too much money chasing too few assets. The excess of accumulated sa savings in the world has difficult to, to yield a decent return. We will have, again, asset price inflation more moderate than in the past, even if savings have uh, been deteriorated by crisis. But once the economies are back on track, the same kind of difficulties will arise due to the lack of good investment opportunities. The next few years, I think short-term interest rates will stay very low, not as low as now, but in general low. We will have positively sloped yield curves until maybe 2012, and then a likely recession 2012 2013. I will say later on why. Monetary policies are uh, nowadays almost synchronized uh, and uh, well, more or less I repeat something that I have already said. In any case, in absolute terms, interest rates will not have leeway to go fiercely up as the threats to growth will prevent them from doing so. Central banks will take into account both CPI and asset inflation, and that will bring about one or two inversions of the yield curve in, co in the coming eight, eight, uh, seven, eight years. That will herald one or two more recessions, but the yield curve inversion will not last a long period as central banks' recession alerts will start ringing immediately.